Okay. So. So what I explained last time. Yeah, here. Yeah. What I explained last time, if you have a true, true stable, yeah, for example, here, if you have a true, true stable like this one, how can how can you how can you compose or how can you create the function out of this true stable? Is that okay? That's what I explained last time. And very important thing, why? Why sometimes I may have the truth table and I want to get the equation? Is that always the opposite? I have the equation and then I get the truth table? No. Most of the time, as you will see later in this course, most of the time we have the truth table and you want to get the equation. Because this is how can how we will make design, how we are gonna design circuit this way. Okay. For example, I wanted I want to design a circuit to do something. Okay. So I have to start with the truth table. When this is the input, what I can write here whatever I want the output related to this input, based on what this what the, what this what what, what, I'm what this circuit is doing. So if the circuit is doing addition, so I'm gonna put the result here. Okay. So when I design, as you will see later in this course, when I design any logic circuit, usually I start with the truth table. Usually I select here what output I need from this circuit at this inputs. Is that okay? And then after I design or I select it, after I do the truth table, now I need to convert it to into an equation. Okay, I need to simplify it. Then I implement it. That's how it is. Okay. So here I explained, given, given a truth table, how can you create the equation this way? And I explained two approaches. One approach is called sum of product. So this is sum, sum of product. Okay, simply I told you for every one, you should have a term here. You have term here for each one. So each one is gonna contribute by one term. So if you have five ones, you should have five terms here. And I tell you this term is, is called main terms. That's what I explained last time. Also very simple, very simple. I told you the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna create these terms is, look here, very simple. When this is the input, I want the output to be one, okay? So if this input here goes to end, and it has to be end because this is sum of product. In sum of product, this term should be end, okay? If it goes to end, so I want this term to give me one at this input. For any inputs, give me zero, okay? That's why we have here, when, when I have five ones here or six ones, so here you see, when when one when this input comes, the corresponding term is one, the other term are zero. And because it's four, I'm gonna get one. This is how I made it. Okay. So in order to get one here, and this is because this is end, okay, and this is one here. So okay, if this is one, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna say C. If this one is B. Okay. And then because this is zero, I have to make it one in order to get one here. So I'm gonna say A prime. Okay. So if I select A prime B C. What's going to happen, you can try it when you go home, you can try it, okay? What's going to happen is, for this input, I'm going to get one. For any other input, for sure, I'm going to get zero, okay? I'm, I'm, I am intentionally making it this way. So I have here several terms. For, for one input, one term is one, other terms are zeros. For any other, if, if any, anything other than this one, it, it should be zero, 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 that's why you get zero, okay? Anyway. And uh, I told you also here, uh, so you should understand what I mean by main terms. Main terms means this is the rows. At, at this rows, we have we have we have what at this rows we have ones. Okay, this is row number. So this is number three. Number I think this is yeah number three. This is row zero, row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the main terms here are from four and from three until until seven. Okay. And I told you, even in the future, one way, one way to define a function is just you by, by the main terms. So I told you also here to define a function. Now you can I can I can give you the truth table to define a function. 
I can give you this here, the mean terms. So here, when I do something like that, this is enough to define a function. Just I'm telling you here, this function has zero everywhere except one for seven. Because once at one for seven, so this one is exactly I give you this one. Is that okay? Um, or for sure I can use I can use an equation like this one. Okay. So one of the things is also you are gonna do. One of the things is also you can you can use to visualize to visualize the truth table is by using time timing diagram. Okay. I didn't talk about it too much, but I think in the video yesterday I I, I explained a little bit before. But in timing diagram also you can you can visualize the truth table. Okay. So the idea is that, that in timing diagram here. If you if look at Z here, guys, okay? So Z is actually zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So if, if, I, if I have something like that here, as you see here, so zero, one, zero, one, and so on, okay? If you look at the second one here, if you look at Y, okay? This is, this is a signal, okay? So this is a signal. So this is a time since a voltage, time, voltage. So zero for some time, and then five volt for some time, and so on, okay? If you, this is for uh, Z. If you look at X here, you can see double zeros, double ones, okay? So exactly same thing I'm gonna do here. Every time is put here for one bit, okay? So anyway, so here's the second one I'm gonna say double zeros, then double ones, double zeros. Okay, Dub double ones and so on. Is that okay? This is for Y. For X, you can see here four zeros, four ones. So what I'm gonna do here, four zeros, one, two, three, four, sorry. One, two, three, four, and then double ones, one, two, three, four, okay? So here, this is only for one one time, and then you can repeat if you want, okay? So this this actually, what I'm doing here, I give you all possible inputs for the circuit. Is that okay? So this is actually visualized what we have here. These are all possible inputs. Let's now, let's now to the our if as well. Okay. So for if, look here. When the input is zero, zero, zero. Okay, let me use a different color. Okay. So here when the input is zero, 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 I should get zero. That's why at this time slot, the output is zero. Okay. For next time slot, the output is one as we see here, and then two zeros, okay? And then one, okay? And then zero, two zeros, right? And then one, yeah. So this is X, sorry, Y, uh, X, Y, Z. These are the inputs, and this is the output of the function, okay? So I want you to understand what I did here. It's a, a truth table, but I visualize it as a signal, right? So sometimes, and that's what we are gonna do in the coming lab, you are gonna use, uh, pattern generator to generate these signals, input the signal to, to your circuit, and then the output will be something like that. Okay, if, if you do for this circuit for sure. Um, one of the things is you should observe here because, because when you do the pattern generator, you, you, you need to select the frequencies, what, what the frequencies you have. You, you can see there is a, a relation between these frequencies. You can see here, here, you know, you know what is frequency, right? So frequency, you have time here. This is the time for one cycle. Frequency is one over over the period or the time of or, or interval of one one cycle. Okay, it's very obvious here. You can see the time here is double the time here, right? Because here two zeros. You can see here, right? So here, uh, for two times two, two zeros, two one, two zeros, two, two one. So the time here is double the time here. In other words, the frequency here is half of this one. Same thing, this one half of this one, or one quarter of this one. Okay, you can you can even tell from here. So from the truth table, you can see every input, the frequency. So if, for example, if I make this one one kilohertz, in order to get exactly same thing like this one, and that's what I want to do to get the truth table. So this frequency has to be five hundred hertz, and this one should be two fifty. And if you have one more, one more variable, so it has to be have this one. Make sense? Is that okay? Any questions?
Should I explain anything else? Okay. So, so I explained last time here, you can get, you can get the function here in, in some of product and it's not simplified. If you want to simplify, if you, uh, if you want to simplify it, you can use algebra manipulation because that's what, this is the only thing you know until now. Because chapter four, chapter three, I'm going to explain another approach for, man, for sim, uh, simplification using maps. We are going to use maps because it's much easier than doing algebra manipulation, but you need to know both of them. Anyway, and also I told you in some of product, you can implement this one using NAND, only NAND. Okay? Only NAND, you can implement it. And then I explain, I can get the same function, okay, but using product of sum for made. So this is product of sum. So this function is exactly equivalent to the one I got here. They are exactly the same thing, but this one in, in the form of uh, sum of product, the other one is in the form of product of sum, okay? And I told you, when you put in product of sum, just in case you wanna, you, you wanna implement, you wanna implement this function only using NOR gates. And that's what we actually do. What actually we do, we like to implement everything using only one gate, either NAND or either NOR. Okay. Any questions? And in this case, also I told you, I can give you here, we, this term is in, in case of uh, product of sum, in this case, you have to, you have to work on, on the zeros, not the ones. You have to work on the zeros. So every zero here is going to make one term here, one term here, one term here. Okay? And I explain how can you do it. Uh, and we call them max terms, max terms. Okay? Max term. We call this row. So if I tell you here, we have for max terms, max terms are actually zero, one, two. Uh, row number zero, row number one, row number two. These are max terms. Main term is, is actually from three until seven. These are the main terms. Is that okay? So to define a function, to define it, it is enough to give you the max term for many main terms. That's enough. So if I tell you the max terms are row number two, four, six, seven, that's enough to define a function. Because if I give you if I give you the max terms, easily you can give the main terms because these are the locations of the zeros. Okay, so the other location should be ones. You don't have other option. Is a zero or one, right? If I give you the location of ones, it's easy to get the location of zeros. You got what I'm saying? That's why, uh, as you will see in this course, I'm gonna use different approaches to define function. Hopefully, this. So sometimes we are gonna define function using truth table. Sometimes we are gonna define it using equation, some some of product or product of sum. Sometimes I'm gonna define it using mean terms, mean terms. Sometimes I can define it using max terms, okay? And I give you a lot of examples. You can see it's easy. If I give you the max terms, you can easily go to uh, get the mean terms. If I give you the mean terms, I, you easily you can get the max terms. Uh, the last thing I was explaining before I finish this chapter is what we call incompletely specified function, or we call it about don't care. So what don't care means? First, what it means? I'm gonna tell you what it means. Before I tell you what it means, let me give you an example. I wanna design a circuit, okay? The input of this circuit is actually BCD. You know BC, what BCD means? BCD means it's a number from zero and nine, okay? And, uh, and there are four inputs here. Number from zero to nine, they are uh, represented in binary. That's why you need four inputs. Three inputs are not enough. Three inputs, three inputs are gonna give you number from zero until seven, right? Here I need from zero to nine, so I need four. Is that okay? Okay. I need four. However, as you know, for, if you have four inputs, you can actually get, get number from zero until 15. Let me say it again. The input should be a number from zero to nine. How many inputs I should use? Three? No, three is not enough. That's okay. Three gives you from zero until seven. It's not enough. So the, the only option I have is four. However, four is more than enough. Yeah, it's more than enough because, because actually I'm gonna get here using four, 
I'm going to hit number from 0 to 9. Uh, uh, I need from 0 to 9, but actually, I'm going to get numbers from 0 to 15. OK? That means, that means, although, although I'm expecting the input to be from 0 to 9, so if you want to use the circuit correctly, the input should not, should not be more than 9, right? So when you apply the input, you have to select a number from 0 to 9. Okay. And then here, I want to do something. For example, I want to know if, if the number is prime or not. OK, so here you can input 0 or 1. Uh, another example, I want to know, for example, if the number is greater than five or not, something like that. Okay, so I, I want to do some operation here and then I want to get the output here. Okay, guys. Okay, now, now let's come. So, what about the numbers from 10 until 15? From 10 to 15. Okay, number one, this is not valid inputs. You should not input numbers from 10 to 15 because it's a specific number. Is that okay? Because this is a hardware circuit. What happens when you put a number from 15 to 15? What happens? What output do you expect? Do you care? I don't care. If it is zero, it means nothing. If it is one, also means nothing. That's why I don't care. So I don't, I don't care what is the output of the signal when the input is between 10 and 15, because you should not input a number from 10 to 15. If you do and input a number from 10 to 15, I don't care about that. I don't care about what, what output is. Is it zero or one? Is that okay? In this case, in this case, in this location, we put here X. Okay. So now, uh, if you look at uh, the function here, for this input, I want the output to be zero. For this input, I want the output to be one. For this input, I don't care. Zero run doesn't matter for me because this, this input should not happen. Is that okay? This is a meaningful. Sometimes we use X, sometimes we use D. It's the same thing. D means for don't care. Yes. Um, what is this? It, it means decimal number. That's why it's from zero to nine. But this decimal number represented in binary. Okay, if so you go to chapter one, I have a couple of slides about BCD numbers. Okay, but, but anyway, it's a BCD means a decimal number, decimal number, right? That's why from uh, decimal digit to be more accurate, not a complete number, digit. That's why it has to be from zero to nine. Is that okay? But it is it is represented in binary. Okay, that 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 means should have from four zeros. This is for digit zero. For nine, it has to be one zero zero one. Is that okay? Anyway, so okay. That's okay. Any question about the idea? So, so the idea here is for some inputs, I want the output to be one. For some inputs, I want the output to be zero. For some inputs, I don't care if it's zero or one. I don't, it doesn't matter. Is that okay? Any questions? However, okay, yes, we agree. If you make it zero, make it one, it doesn't matter for you. We agree on that. However, sometimes I can benefit or I can uh, sometimes it's good for me to make them zeros or ones in simplification okay so for example here I have options I can put zero here or zero here is that okay or I can put here one or zero or I can put here one and zero here or one and one this is I can well, it doesn't matter yes I can do all of that so which one, again, I don't care. If zero run, I don't care for, for result. However, maybe, maybe one option of this option is gonna get me more simplified function. You got what I'm saying? So again, don't care means I don't care about the output, but, but I can, it can help me if I select a certain value for this don't care uh, uh, output, it's gonna help me to simplify more. So I give you here one example. For, for example, for this truth table here, in the beginning, I'm gonna assume both of them are zero and zero, okay? And then I got I got, I got got a function here, and then I simplified it, I got this one. And then I try it one and zero. So here I try uh, one here and zero here. And then I simplify, I got this one. For sure, this one is better than this one for sure, right? And then I try one and one. And then I simplify, okay? And I found this one. 
So if you if you see these three options here, so this one is much better for me than this one, more simplified than the other ones. That's okay. In this case, uh, it's good for me to put one and zero. So this is the best option for me. I can here put one here and put zero. I consider one and zero because this can simplify it more, right? But someone can ask me, wait a second, but this is too complicated because what if you have here, this is somehow easy because you have two, don't care. What if you have three, don't care? So if I have three, that means I should have how many options, eight options. Should I, should I calculate the function eight times? What about if you have four, don't care? So I have to 16. So the way I did here, yes, it is, it is. We're not gonna do this way anyway, okay? When I talk about maps, when I come to the maps, the chapter three, it's gonna be much easier to do to, to use to simplify this one here than what I did here. You understand what I'm saying? So I, what I'm doing here, I'm just introducing the concept of don't take care and how it can help me. But honestly, uh, it will be much easier to see what option, what option here for don't care is gonna help me more in the simplification. It will be easier to do it in the maps than don't take care. You got what I'm saying? Any questions? Okay, good. Uh, so in this case, we call this function incomplete specified function, incomplete specified function. Anyway, so I am done with this chapter, but before I start this, before I, I start the chapter four, I start chapter three. I wanna, I wanna give you overview on what, uh, I, I wanna give, I wanna first tell you what, 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 we, ha uh, what we have done so far, what we are gonna do in chapter three, and then after that, I'm gonna give you a big picture for the whole course. Okay. So let's let's so here let me let me summarize what I did in chapter in this chapter and connect everything together. So again, so what I did here in this chapter, guys, I told you we have number one, we have three basic operation, not and or. Okay. I give you the symbol for each one, I give you the truth table of each one, how it works. And I made it very clear. Any circuit, any logic circuit are gonna be done by using this, this three basic operation. That's number one, right? Number two. Uh, yeah, I told you here, we, using this, these three basic operation, we can create functions, okay? And then I give you some example for functions, okay? So actually here, because this is just, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you what function means, this function actually doesn't do anything. It doesn't have, they don't, they don't do addition or multiplication or multiplexing or decoding because that's what I'm gonna teach you later in this course, okay? So this function just for education. I'm gonna put this one here, I'm gonna put this one here, I'm gonna do this one. But if you ask what this function is doing, what operation is doing, it's not doing anything because it's just for education. But I'm gonna repeat the same thing or I'm gonna do the same thing later in this course when we design, when we design some logic circuits, okay, like decoder, encoder, uh, multiplexer, uh, 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 and so on, register and other things, okay? So, and then, uh, and then here, I, I, I uh, here, given if you have, if you have like, uh, if you have an equation like this one, you should be able to draw a circuit like this one. If you have a circuit like this one, you should be able to draw an equation like this one. Uh, then after that, I'm gonna jump to 1.4 first. Okay, so in 1.4, I told you uh, using this basic function, I'm gonna use them to create gates. And these gates, I'm gonna use them like, like a standalone gates. Okay, so I don't care. I, I'm not gonna think about how, how it is made. No, it's just a gate, I'm telling you. Okay, so. So I'm, in other words, I'm not gonna create this gate from the basic operation. No, I'm gonna use it as a standalone for me. Anyway, so the first one here, as I uh, thought before, number one, NAND, okay? And NAND actually is, if you have a, a, B prime, this way. So if you, if so, so here, or in other words, if you put just NAND and you put not after that, okay? This is NAND. Uh, so it's, it, this is how, how, how I was able to make NAND using the basic operations, okay? Uh, same thing for NOR, 
this is nur or and then after this one is not but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna use it this i think yeah this is i corrected this one in the slide okay but i'm not gonna use it i'm not gonna use it this way i'm gonna use it, use it as a gate okay uh and i told you why why we need named and no we need named and nor because actually we're going to implement the circuits mostly using named and no that's what i explained also we have exclusive or this way and exclusive nor exclusive or is actually x y prime or y x prime okay exclusive nor is actually the complement this is the relation between them just you complement them so this one should be x y or x prime y prime okay and this can tell you if it is equal or not equal it can measure for example if the, if the input is equal zero zero or one one this one will be zero but this one will be one right? yeah, that's the same but you do inverter that's the reason okay um, and later in this course i'm going to tell you how we're going to use this exclusive over okay and exclusive no uh and then for sure you know uh, the chips you are using in labs uh, the, as they have this all 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 these kids okay after that i explained here boolean algebra the boolean algebra uh, i told you the boolean algebra is similar to the algebra you learned it before but there are major differences what you did before addition division multiplication subtraction we're not going to do this operation instead we're going to do the basic operation we had and or okay and invert uh, that's what i explained also uh, uh, one of the major difference as well in in the normal algebra you have you have a variable x variable x it can be a number it can be seven it can be nine it can be 10 20 whatever okay number right but in our case all variables are just binary zero one all of them, zero one. Is that okay? Anyway, and then I give you here, I give you some uh, rules. This is exactly similar to what you did in normal algebra. So normal algebra, when I tell you x plus zero is equal to x, right? But this is addition. Here, this is or, not addition. Anyway, so I give you here some rules. Uh, some of these rules are similar to the normal algebra. Some of them are not. You have to be careful. And then after that, I... Uh, yeah, I give you several things here. And then I summarize everything in this table. And I told you in exams, in exams in quizzes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this slide. This slide will be good. I'm gonna print it, give it, give it to you, okay? This summarize everything, I, uh, every uh, the rules or theorems I used here, okay? After that, I told you, okay, so how, how, how we are gonna use this algebra uh, you explained to us, okay? Number one, it can be used in equivalence. If I give you two functions, if I give you two, two function and or two expression, I, I can ask you prove they are equal. That's what it is for. Okay? Equal means they are going to do exactly the same thing. If this multiplication, this multiplication. This division, division. They are going to do exactly the same thing because they are going to give you the same result. That's what I explained. And oh, oh, oh. so here you can use uh, you, uh, you can use this algebra, Boolean algebra, to simplify using the rules as I did here. You have a lot of examples here. Uh, this is one way to do it using Boolean, uh, Boolean algebra. Uh, manipulation to prove one expression is equal to another expression. I told you there is another way you can actually, you can choose a truth table for each one of them. So this is the truth table of the first one, this is the truth table of the second one. And I can say these two expressions are identical if, if, if they are exactly, if the result is exactly identical. Okay, so you have two circuits. For any input, okay, they are going to give the same result. So that's why they are. If only one input is different, so they are not identical. So if it happens, if you can find only one is not uh, is not uh, equal, it's not identical. Okay. After that, I told you one of the things is here. I can use uh, Boolean algebra manipulation is for simplification. Simplification. Okay. And even I told you, and now chapter three is going to come here. So what I'm going to do in chapter three is nothing more than just simplification, but using a more easier approach than manipulation. Okay? So that's what everything I'm going to do in chapter three. I'm going give to you, give you an expression. Then I'm going to ask you to simplify. So if you simplify it, 
using normal algebra or using the maids, I'm going to explain short that we, both of us should give you the same result. Okay. But this one is much easier than this one. Anyway, even I explain what I mean by simplification. I mean, if I have a circuit like this one, I can, I can, I can make a circuit if it is not, if this, if this one is not the most, if this one is not the most simplified function, from this one, I can simplify. So that these two circuits, these two circuits are gonna do exactly the same thing, okay? But with less number of gates, I can reduce the number of gates or I can use the number of inputs. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes if you just reduce, here you have two inputs, here you have three. Okay, so if just reduce the number of inputs, it also would be better or more simplified. Anyway, so here I give you a lot of examples. Okay, uh, you need to look at it because you need to know. Also, honestly, also most of the time we're gonna use uh, the maps to do simplification because it's much easier as we'll see, but still no one can learn this course and, and if you don't know how to do uh, basic or uh, simply in and uh, uh, Boolean algebra manipulation. Okay. That's why I'm gonna ask for this one for sure. I give you a lot of example. Usually most, most uh, you will see, uh, just look at the example, what I explained here, but you see most of the time, always we try to look for something common and take it out and then do simplification. This is most of the time we do something like that. But anyway, you have a lot of examples about this one. Uh, finally, Finally, the last, last thing I explained in this chapter is given, given a true stable, given a true stable, how can you make how can you make a function? Okay, using product of sum. So now I'm expecting you know when I say product of sum, you know what I mean. When I say mean terms, you know what I mean because that's what I'm going to use in making chapter. When I say sum of product, you know what I mean. Max terms, you know what I mean because I'm going to use it in English. Any questions before we move forward? Okay, so next chapter is simply about the simplification I use here, okay, but using maps, using visual maps instead of using Boolean algebra. That's it. So all, all what I'm gonna do in this chapter is I'm gonna give you expression and then I'm, I'm gonna ask you to simplify. That's it. Okay. Now let's let's take a picture on the whole course. What's this? What's the whole course is about? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. So let me see. Yeah, look here, guys. In my opinion, I can divide this course into two parts. The, best, the first part is about the basic basic stuff or basic material. And this should be chapter one and two and three. So here, that's what, that's what I'm gonna do. I will, by, by finishing chapter three, you should have basic, the basic information needed to do design, to design logic circuits. You know what I'm saying? So the purpose of chapter one and two and three to teach how can you, the basic information you need to do design, design of circuits, logic circuits. Starting from chapter four, five, and six, okay? And maybe if we have time, we can go for seven, we'll see, okay? So in this, in this chapter, in these chapters, I'm gonna use the information, I'm gonna use what I, what, what I taught here in one and two, three, in, or, in order to design, in order to design logic circuits, okay? Logic circuits like multiplier, other multiplexer and so on, okay? And then these logic circuits, you can use them later. Uh, for example, if you, if you take a course about computer architecture, they should, they should teach you how I use this basic stuff here to create a computer, okay? If you, if you learn anything else, also same thing, how can you use it? For how, so here I'm gonna teach just basic, basic stuff, okay? But later in other courses, you can learn how can you use this basic stuff to do do something uh, big, okay? Uh, any questions? So mostly what I'm gonna do here is I just, I'm gonna use the information I have here, okay? So I'm gonna use two staples. I'm gonna use the still, I'm gonna use the gates. I'm, I'm gonna use simplification, okay? And I'm gonna use the like, like what I did. Any questions? Okay. One more thing, uh, just I wanna, um, I sent you several emails. One email is about uh, uh, quiz quiz number two, right? Quiz number two will be on Wednesday, the coming Wednesday, uh, September 27. And this quiz, is, it will cover chapter two only, okay? And this quiz, in this quiz, I'm gonna test you in two things. Number one, 
in Boolean algebra manipulation, I just want to make sure you, you can, if I give you, if I give you expression, you can simplify it using Boolean algebra. Okay, this is one thing. The other thing is, um, given a truth table, if I give you a truth table, you should be able to get the formula for some product and product of some. Is that okay? These are two things I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on, on the quiz. Any questions? Okay. Uh, one, two, uh, before I start chapter three, there are very few things I wanna explain. Uh, sometimes guys, for example, if I have end this way and I have inverter here, inverter this way, sometimes this one, I write it this way because I think in Zybook, sometimes you do, they do it this way. So if you see a bubble, if you see a bubble here at the input, that means it's inverted. So that's the same. So if you see a bubble here, that means the input is inverted. So it's this by plus inverted. Uh, the other thing also you are gonna see in Zybox is, uh, most of the time here, if you have a truth table like X, Y, Z, for example, most of the time is a function here, if it has only one bit. Okay, most of the time, that's what we did here. However, in reality, maybe this function, it has two bits. It depends on what this function is doing. If, for example, if, I, if I'm adding two bits to two bits, the output should be three bits. For example, just an example, okay? So in this case, the output of this function is gonna be three bits. Is that okay? So that means I'm gonna have three equations, not only, not only one equation, because I'm saying, so I'm gonna call this one F1, F2, F3. Okay, and everything I taught you can do, you can apply it on F1, F2, and F3. So F1 should, exam, for example, is going to equal X, Y, or X prime, Y, Y prime, for example. If F2, for example, equal X, um, X prime, for example, F3 should equal whatever. You understand what I'm saying? So everything I taught you can just use it. So it just, just when you do, when you calculate some product or product of some, you are going to solve this problem like three problems. You can just do this one. Take this one, take this one, and so uh, you will see in future who will do something like that. But uh, uh, I just want to tell you, uh, no, it's not it's not going to be always the output is one bit. Okay, it depends on what what you are doing. It, as output can be two, can be three. But also, I want to tell you, nothing is new because what you what you do here, just same thing as you did before when you work on this one. It's like you have two problems in one problem. You get what I'm saying? So what you have to do here, you have to work on this one. Okay, do, uh, you can create some of the two sets of verification, and then you have to work with this one independently, like everyone is independent. Okay. Uh, the, the last thing I have here is uh, also for, I didn't decide the test yet, but the first test will cover chapter one, two, and three. Okay, I'm gonna tell you when, when before we finish chapter three, I, for sure I will give you time. Uh, the last thing here also, we, we graded quiz number one, okay? What I need from you, because look guys, the nature of this course is what I'm teaching right now, I'm gonna use it for, until the end of the semester. What I'm teaching is the first lecture, I'm gonna use it all the time. This is the nature of this course, they are not civil. Chapters are not civil, that I'm saying. Simplification, Boolean algebra, everything I'm gonna use until the end of the semester, you get what I'm saying? So if you have, a misunderstanding in, in quiz one, you should, you, you, I asked the great, great reader to write some comments to help you to, uh, to what, what, mis what mistakes you made. Also, I posted the solution. So what I wanna, what I wanna say here is, if you have a misunderstanding, you need to correct it, okay? Don't continue with this misunderstanding, otherwise it can make up problems in the future, okay? So, so here, just uh, when, when I looked at the graded quizzes, I find just a couple of uh, things I wanna explain here before I start the chapter three. One of the things is still, still students are confused about uh, overflow, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve the last question we had here in the quiz about overflow, uh, so, and how I explained it, okay? Uh, so for example, here, this, this was the question we had here in the quiz. One, zero, 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 okay? And then one, zero, zero, one. I want, I'm gonna add it to one, zero, zero, zero. And then one, one, zero, one, okay? I'm gonna do addition. 
Okay, so as I told you, let's do the addition here. Zero plus zero, uh, sorry, one plus one is zero, and then we have here one. One plus zero plus zero is one. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus zero is one. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is one. One plus one is zero, and then we have a carry here. We have a carry. So I did a mistake. Oh, yeah, zero and zero. Yeah, zero and zero. This one should be zero. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Now, let's decide if there is, uh, if this number is unsigned, unsigned, is there an overflow or not? Unsigned. Okay. I told you, very simple. Is there a carry result from the last bit? Yes or no? Yes. So there is un unsigned overflow. That means, that means if this number is Unsigned, I need bigger space. The result you are getting here is wrong result because I need five bits instead of four bits. Because this is a meaning of overflow. Okay, overflow means you want to put the result in eight bits, but actually I need more than eight bits. Okay, because the number got bigger. You add it. Okay. Anyway, now let's look at the second one. If these numbers are signed, is there an overflow or not? Very simple, guys. Look here. I need a very simple rule. I told you, if you add a positive to positive and you got negative number, or I add negative to negative and I got positive number. You got what I'm saying? This is the two cases that can uh, indicate overflow, sign to overflow. Anything else, there is no overflow. So let's look. This number, positive or negative? Negative, because the last bit here is one. This number is negative. But the result, the carry is not a part of the result. It's just a carry. The result here in the last bit is zero. But if I added a negative number to a negative number, I get a positive number. Does it make any sense? For sure, something for sure something is wrong. You add negative to negative, you got positive. For sure, something is wrong because of overflow. Okay, very simple. So here in this case, there should be overflow in the two cases, signed or unsigned. Uh, I had also one question. Uh, one of the things also here I want to. Address here, several students also made a mistake on this one. So I give you this number here, one, zero, 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 four zeros, and then one, zero, one. And then I, I told you this number is signed number, signed number, okay? Converted to decimal. What's this number in decimal? Okay. Uh, what, some students, what they did, they look here, yeah, this number is negative. And this number is five, so it should be negative five. This is true if we are using the magnitude, what's the name, it was signed the magnitude system. But I, I made it clear, yes, we have different systems. I explained three different systems to represent negative number. One's complement, two's complement, and the signed magnitude. But I, I also, I made it very clear, all the time we're gonna only focus on the two's complement. For the reason I, I made it, I, I don't want to only to teach the two's complement. I want you to know that there are different systems, but actually most of the buildings are using two's complement because it can, it's hardware friendly. I can, I can design the hardware using this one efficiently, okay? So uh, for sure the answer is not correct because here the, this system is, uh, this not true in case of, uh, in case of two's complement, okay? So as I told you in the lecture, if you wanna convert this one in decimal, number one, if this number is negative, we agree on that. If you look at the last bit here, so this, this number is negative. So it should be negative something, negative x. Is that okay? This negative number, because the last one here is one, okay? So this should be a negative number, so negative something x. Okay? So now I wanna get x. I wanna know that negative five, negative two, negative 20, negative x. So again, the easy way to do it in my opinion is, I am gonna take this one, I'm gonna calculate the two's complement of this one. When you calculate the two's complement, so it's similar, you multiply it by negative one. Or, okay, so I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna get x, positive x. You got what I'm saying? So when, when I take this one, I calculate the two's complement, so this number is negative five, I'm gonna get five. And this number is negative 20, I'm gonna get positive 20. Okay, because that's, that's it. So two's complement is gonna, is gonna negate any number. So if you have a number, positive or negative. You calculate the two's complement, you actually negate the number. Okay. So anyway, 
So after I do, I do that, first how I can do that, you, number one, you flip the bits. So it should be zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero. And then you add one. So it becomes here you, after you add one here. Is that okay? So this is the number I have. So this is X. This is X I'm looking for, okay? So this number and this number, they are the same, but this is negative and this is positive. Okay? And then you can, because, so why you did this way? Simply because if you have a positive number, you can treat the number easily. And just, just to say, this number here, uh, I can say one plus two. This is one, two, three, four, eight, right? 16, 32, is that right? So this, this should be one, one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32. That's it. So the result will be negative, this number. Uh, you have to add them together, and the result is negative. 1, 2, 4, 16. 2 to the power of 0. Okay, let me see. 2, two, two, two to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. Oh, oh what I did here. Yeah. It's 1, 2, 4. Okay. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Okay, 127, uh, sorry, 128. No, I think something was wrong. Okay, let me, I'm not gonna make it this way. Okay, uh, two to the power of zero, even if you make it this way, it should be okay. Two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, two to the power of four, five, six, that's it. 64, after 32, 64. Okay. Anyway, uh, the last thing I have here to move forward, uh, yeah, I think this was a common mistake, mistake between students. Okay, so here I ask you, I give you, um, I give you minus 11. Listen to me because this is a very important thing. I give you minus 11, and then I ask you to calculate, uh, convert this one to binary, but you need to store it in 8 bits, 8 bits binary number. Got what I'm saying? In 8 bit binary numbers. Okay. So, the way you have to do it, as I told you before, number one, you have to make positive, positive 11. And then after you make positive 11, you are going to you are going to take the two complement, two complement to convert it to negative 11. OK, so positive 11 is actually here should be one. Is that OK? Uh, this one should be eight plus two plus one. OK, so here should be one, one, zero, one, and then zero, 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 zero. Is that OK? OK. So this one is actually positive 11. You calculate the two's complement of this one. So for two's complement, you flip the bits, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then you add 1. So this one will be negative 11. Is that OK? What's the mis mistake, mistake some students did? The mistake some students did is when they represented positive 11, they represented it in four bits. And they and then they calculated the two columns of four bits. Why is this so? Simply because four bits are not enough for negative eleven. Negative eleven needs more more than four bits. So let me let, let me again. This is the best way to do it. But I'm just I wanna I wanna explain to you what what other approach. For example, okay. So what what some students did, and I want you to learn from this mistake. So for example, I'm gonna start one, one, zero, one. This is positive 11. Then I'm gonna calculate the two complement of this one. Okay, let's do it. So it's gonna be zero, zero. Okay, one, zero, add one. You got this one. And this negative 11, that's not true. That's not true. Even, even if you just look at it, it's a positive number. It's a positive number, it's not true. Okay, however, however, if you just add one bit to it, so if you start, it would be correct. Look here, I just want, want you to learn what went wrong here, but let me, okay, I can say it is zero, one, zero, one, one. This is positive 11. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna convert, I'm gonna convert this one to negative 11. It should be zero, zero, one, zero, one. Okay, and then I'm gonna add one. So this, this one is negative 11, 11. Now, because this one is five bits, 
I can extend, I can extend it to, to eight bits by adding ones. And now it will be correct. You can extend by adding ones. Now it's correct. Okay, again, it's the best way to answer this question. You can you could start with eight bits. It's the best way. However, if you want to do it by using a small number of bits and then you extend, you extend by adding ones, it's still it's okay. But what we say, why when I start with small bits, I got wrong the result. When I start with five bits, I got the correct result. Can anyone guess here? <laughs> okay, so if you, if you look at four bits, guys, in four bits, you can the maximum you can get out of out of four bits is negative two to the power of three, which is negative eight. You want to represent, okay? So what you want to do here, you want to represent negative eight, eight, eleven in four bits. You can at least it has to be five bits at least. Got them say? So here. I have to start with at least five bits. So because over of overflow, I got wrong answer here. Okay. So at least if you start from uh, five bits, if you start from five bits, okay. Based on what I explained in chapter one, uh, the the smallest negative number you can you can represent in five bits is actually negative two to the power of four, which is negative sixteen. Okay. So you can go until negative negative uh, sixteen. Okay. So negative 11 should be enough. Anyway, it's just over, just to complicate it. You can easily, from the beginning, you start from eight bits, and then you, you continue. It would be much easier. But just, I want to, because this is related to overflow and somehow complicated, I, 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 want, I want you to understand it. It's just, you want to get negative 11, OK? So you should, uh, you have to make sure Start from the first number of bits, you have to make sure this number of bits should be enough for negative bits. Okay? At least by or more, you will get a correct result and then you can extend by putting one here. Anyway, any questions? Right. So, chapter three. Uh, so, I told you here in this chapter, we are going to do only one thing in this chapter. Given given an expression, how can we use a visual way? We call it emits to do simplification or kind of emits or emits. Okay, so uh, so if you do simplification using algebra manipulation, you are going to get the same result. I'm get, I'm getting here. Okay, however, this approach is much easier than than this uh, algebra manipulation. As you will see, you will see much easier. That's why most of the time we're going to use this one. Most of the time we'll use this. So here I'm going to teach first what what is the max you have are two variable max. You have only two. Or the truth table has, has our, uh, the truth table has only two variables. Or the logic circuit has two variables. What if we have three variable functions? How I can simplify it? What if I have four variable functions? How I can simplify it? Okay. We are not going to go beyond. Four, four variables because key maps are going to be more uh, are going to be difficult to go more than four using human. However, there are computers uh, programs they can they can do simplification for more than four. So for this course, I'm going to teach until four variables. More than that, it's going to be uh, difficult to be done by humans. Okay? Uh, it's not for sure very difficult, but for sure until four it should be okay. Uh, so here in this section. Okay, uh, what we are gonna get from the maps here are actually some sum of product format. So I'm gonna simplify, I have function. I'm gonna simplify the function and then I'm gonna get the simplified function in some product format, okay? Then I'm gonna teach using, okay, what if I wanna get product of sum? What can I do? So this is what I'm gonna do here, product of sum, okay? How I can simplify using T maps, using product of sum. And just, it's just a very small section because it's just similar to what I did here, but I'm going to do a little modification. It's going to be similar. Okay? The last thing here, don't care. That's what I taught today. Don't care. So if I have don't care, how I can use it here in maps? Okay. I, as, I, as I explained to today, I can use don't care to help me to simplify the function. It's the same thing. But here it's going to be much easier than what I, what I did today because you just look at the map, 
Okay, this x, if I make this x one, it's gonna make it easy for me, just by looking at the, at the map. It's gonna be much easier than what I explained to you. But I, I just want, want to emphasize, I, I want to emphasize that in this chapter, I'm not going to show you anything new, just simple verification, similar what was like this in the previous chapter, They're using manipulation, but just it's much easier. So anyway, so let's start with, that's what I'm explaining here. Uh, the key maps are gra graphical method, visual method. You can visualize the zero and ones of the Boolean function. Uh, you can you can do simplification. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's start with two maps for sure. So here, this is how how the map looks like. So here, uh, as I told you, uh, if you have if you have two variables, so this is the map looks like. If you have three variables, if you have four variables. We're gonna focus on, on this here. So the relation, how many cells you have here? Number of cells. Number of cells here equal here, uh, two, two, two to the power of number of variables. So here, two to the power of two, two to the power of three, two to the power of four. So if, if I have two variables, that means I have four cells. If I have three variables, so I have six, six squares here. If I have four, four variables, I should have 16. You know why? I'm gonna tell you why. If you have two variables, how many, how many row you are gonna have in the truth table? All possible cases, how many row? Two to the power of two, right? If you have three variables, how many row you are gonna have in the truth table? Two to the power of three? Because every row is gonna be represented by one square here. So the number of squares should equal to number of rows you have in the truth table. Every row, as you would see right now, is represented by one square here. That's why the relation is similar to the, to the relation we had before about how many rows in the truth table uh, and the number of variables. Okay, so anyway, so this is how it looks like. I'm gonna start with two variables and then three variables for, for that. Uh, they are very close to each other. So once you understand one of them, I'm gonna just repeat, move, repeat it in the other ones because the approach is almost the same. Okay. Let's start with two variables, which is maybe it's not the most important one, two variables, because <laughs> two variables, it may be easy to use algebra manipulation, but, but just, I need to teach the three cases, but, but two, two variables, it, it, it may not be the most interesting one, because in case of two variables, the equation already too small. You can do, it's easy to do um, algebra manipulation. But anyway, for sure it's more interesting in three and four, but I'm gonna ex explain the three cases. Let's start with two variables. So look how it works. So this is the map. This is the map we have here, okay? Uh, we have two variables. That means we should have four, two to the power of two. We have two, four cells, as you, uh, four, four, four squares. As you see here, we have four squares. That's okay. This is the truth table here. The first thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do, uh, given the truth table, you have, you, you have to copy, I have to copy the truth table here, okay? And then I'm gonna take this one, to work on this one, to do the same verification as I'm gonna explain. So, so are two steps. Number one, given truth table, I have to map, I have to map the truth table to, to, the, to the map, that's number one. Number two, I'm gonna work on this map to calculate the simplified version. So let's start with the first one. Given truth table, so for example, I give you this truth table. Okay, how I can map, how I can map it here. Very simple, very simple. Look here, every row, every row has, has a square here. So for example, as you see here, this is row M0, M1, M2, M3. Okay, so that means here, M0 is here, M1 is here, M2 is here, M3 is here. Okay, and then here, because this one is one, Look, look how it works. So again, guys, I'm, I'm making it very simple. Number one, given a truth table. Number one, you have to map the truth table, okay, to the map, that's number one. Number two, after you do that, you work on the map to calculate the simplified version, as you will see. But I'm, now I'm focusing only on the first step. Given the truth table, how I can create the map this way. As you see, this map has one from zero. 
And this map is actually is another representation to the cell. Okay. Because this cell, this cell is actually row number zero, row number one, row number two, row, row number three. So if I give you this map, it's very easy to go back to the truth table. It's a truth table. Why? I'm telling you, row zero has one. Row, row, row one has one, row two has zero, row three has zero. So it's a two table. My cell is a two table. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so all what I have to do, guys, I, I have, as you see here, I have this map this way. Is that okay? So, and then uh, whatever I have here, I just, I'm going to move it to the locations. So the first one here, M0. So here, this is whatever you have here has to come here. This is M1. So whatever you have here, zero or one, you have to map it here. Whatever you have here, you have to put it here. Whatever you have to here, you have to put, you have to put it here. Okay. And now I just want to tell you uh, one thing here. So M0, M0 is the main term, main term is zero. You remember in, in this main term is zero, Okay, if it has to be X prime, Y prime, because you have zero and zero. Uh, okay, that's why here I'm writing X prime and Y prime. So this is a mean term, X prime and Y prime. So if, you want, if I want to calculate the mean term of this one, it has to be X prime, Y prime. We agree, right? That's why here I'm writing X prime, Y prime. For M1, if I want to calculate the mean term for, 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 for M1, it's going to be X prime, Y. X prime, Y, the mean term. If you go back how I put the meter term to x prime y. Same thing here, we have x, y prime for m2, m2, we have x, y prime. And then look for x, y, x, y. Is that okay? And now, this is the interesting part. Look here. So I, if so, these are guys, these are just the mean terms I explained to you before. Look here. So if you look at these two, again, guys, and what I'm saying, Every square here is representing one row. That's what I said. Okay. Number two. Whatever is a function here, you are gonna copy it here. Copy it in the corresponding place here. Okay. Uh, number three. Every every row is actually main term, as I said before, main term. Okay. So that's why what you have here is prime y prime. You have here x one, x prime y, and so on. Okay. If you look at the and this is the interesting part if you look at the mean term is here you find if you look at these two these two here these two we have x here and x here that's why i'm saying this is the area of x okay because this is the area of x this is the area of x the remaining part okay is actually x prime and that's true you can see here we have x prime here and x prime here so when i say this is the area of x that means all, all the mean terms here have x. And this is outside the area of x. Any place outside the area of x should be x prime. We have x, x prime. That's why, yes, the squares outside the area of x is actually x prime, x prime. Okay, what about y? If you look here, I'm telling you, this is the area of y. This is this two. Because we have y here, what we have y here. Okay. What about this part here? This outside the area of y, that's why it has y prime and y prime. Right? This is y here. When I say y here, that means in here, we have y prime, y prime. Okay. So uh, I express, that's why you look here, guys, we have here one. We have here zero. We have here zero. We have one. So what this means? It means here, here, y is one. In this area, M1 and M3, let, let's look at M1 and M3. Sorry, M3 is here. You see Y is one here, okay? Here, zero means Y is zero in, this, in, this two, in these two items. In these two rows, Y is actually zero, okay? So anyway, let me, I don't need it now, but I'm gonna need it later. Let, let me make it very simple, very simple. We have a two table, we have mean terms. This mean terms are x prime y prime x prime y. Go back and see how how I calculate the mean terms before. Okay, so here zero zero means x prime y prime. So this is for the mean this mean term. This mean mean term x prime y and so on. Okay, so and more importantly is 
when I say, this is, a, when I say something like that, very important thing, this is the area of X. This is the area of X here. What it means? It means all, all the squares here at X. Because this is the area of X. Any other area should have X prime outside this area. So this is the area of X, right? This is the area of X prime. That's why you see X prime and X prime. Okay? Because I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use this one in in, uh, in simplification. I'm gonna tell you how, but anyway. So here, if you look at Y. Here I'm telling you this is the area of y. What it means? It means this is squares have y. Any other area, which is this one's here, should have y prime. Is that okay? Any questions? Good. So uh, let's continue step by step. You'll find it's just very easy. So now I'm gonna focus on, uh, I told you there are two steps. Still I'm focusing on the first step. The first step, Given a function, okay, how can you map this function to the key map? And then once I map it to the key map, I'm going to do some simplification on the key map. So let's, I'm still focusing on the first step. So if I give you a function, I can give you a function using different ways, as I explained to before. So the function can be a true stable like this one. So I, if I give you the function in a true stable like this one, you, it's easy to map it to, to, to create the map this way. I didn't simplify yet because I have to create the map first and then it simplify after that. Okay, so, the first, so this, is, this is the first step. The first step, I'm going to give you the three stable and then you create the map. Easy, right? How, how can you do that? Very simple because every square is corresponding to one row M0, M1, M2, M3. Okay. Second way, second way, I can give you a function this way. Okay, if I give you this function this way, how can you create the map here? Is the second approach, okay? Uh, here, what you can do is, you already know x y prime, okay? So if you if you look here in this term here, x y prime. Listen to me, x y prime. What it means? This is square is in the area of x and in the area of y prime. Oh, what do you mean? I'm gonna tell you what I mean. This is the area of x, right? So any term here has x, any term here has x, right? That's right. This is y, okay? So this one has y, x, y, okay? But this is y prime. The other one is y prime. So x, y prime has to be here, okay? So x, y prime means the same, the same. In x, by, 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 it is in y prime, which is this one. How did you know? This is x, it's in x, okay? And this x and y, because this one is in y. But this, this term here, or this square is in x, but it's in y prime, because this part is y prime. When I say, when I say this is x here, this part is x, it means this part is x prime. When I say this part is y, it means this, this part is y prime, very simple. So when I say x, y prime, that means this cell, this cell is in area of x and the area of y prime. So here, this is x. So in x, x is there are two in x, but this one is in y, this one in y prime. So I'm gonna select this one. So that's why I'm, when I take this one, I'm gonna put it here. Is that okay? Let's look at the second one. The second one, this is one cell, one cell, this cell is in y, right? And it is in x prime. So what is y? Y is here. This is this is the area of y. The first one, one here is actually x prime because this is x is here. And the second one here is x, right? So now it is in y and x prime. So I have to select this one, not this one. That's why you can see the result here is, the result here, I have to put one here and I have to put one here given this one. There is another approach, but it's very bad, very inefficient. Given this one, you can you can create the truth table, and then for room the truth table, you can come here. For sure, that's not a good idea at all. Okay. Let me let me have another example to just better understand what I did here. Okay. Um, in case, listen to what I'm saying. In case of two, in case of two cells, uh, sorry, in case of two variables. In case of two variables, okay? 
the terms I'm going to have here, I have two cases for these terms. The terms can have two variables, or it can have only one variable. So for example, I can say y or x prime, y prime. I can do something like that, OK? So, so here, this variable here in this equation can be two variables, or, or only can be one variable. If it is two variable, that means it is only one cell here. If it is, if it is one variable, it's going to be two cells. I'm going to explain now. But let's focus on two variables now. So once I see here, because this is this is two variable, two var uh, two variable function. Once I find two variable here, so this is for sure it's one cell. This is one cell. Okay. Let's locate. Let's locate this cell. Okay. Let's start with this one. This one is telling me this is in this in the area of x. Okay. This is the area of x. We have two here in x. Okay. But the second one is telling me it is in y prime. So it has to be here because this is y. This is y prime. Make sense? This is the area of y, this is the area of y prime. Okay, so this one has to come to here. This one here has to come to here. So it has to put one here. Okay. If you don't understand yet, so let's have another one. Here you have x prime, y prime. So that again, because it is two terms, it's only one, one, set, one square, not two, only one, right? So, but this one is actually, in x prime, so x prime, these two are x prime, because this is x, these two are x, these two are x prime. X prime are in these two, right? But it is in y prime, so this is y here, this one is in y, and this y is y prime, so I'm gonna select this one. So this is actually here. This one is gonna come to here. Again, what I'm saying is, if you have, in case of two variables, if you have, Two, two variables here in this term, so this term has to be only one, one square. In case of three variables, as I'm going to explain it later, in case of three variables, three variables means one square. In case of four variables, four variables means one square. Anyway, but here, as I told you, for example, I'm going to remove this one, assuming the equation is this one or y. Okay? I would, now I have only one variable. One variable here means two squares. What is y here? What, what, what is y? So that means this is y. So if you see, this is the area of y. So if you have here y, so actually I have to put one here and one here. Because this means the area of y. Okay. If it is uh, x, for example, assuming this is not, this variable is just x. Okay. So that means this is x here. So I'm going to put here one and here one. Again. When you see two variables, it means only one square. If you see one variable, it has to be two squares, okay? This, this one variable, if it is x, so it is here. One here and one here. If it is x prime, so it has to be these two cells here for x prime. If it is y, this is the area of y. So I'm gonna put here one and one. If it is y prime, so it has to be here, y prime is here, okay? Uh, Okay, the next thing I want to teach here is called Boolean adjacent adjacency. Okay, so again, two steps. Number one, you have you need to create the map. Okay, I created the map. Number two, from the map, I want to calculate the function. Is that okay? I want to do simplification. To do simplification, I'm gonna select neighboring, neighboring square. So I need to know what I mean by neighbor. So okay, that's what I'm explaining. So the definition, two squares are adjacent or neighbor, two squares are adjacent or neighbors, okay? If the difference between these two squares is only in one, in one variable. So for example, look here. So this one and this one should be neighbor. Why these two are neighbors? Just give me one minute, finish this one. So these two should be neighbor. Why these two are, are neighbor? Because this one has x of n, this is of The difference is only in one variable. Only, only one y brand and one. So this should be neighbor. Okay. What about so this is a definition? The definition is two sets are neighbors if there is a change only in one variable. Okay. Based on what based on this definition, these two also should be neighbor. Why? Because this one has y prime, has y prime, this one has x, only the change in one in one variable. 
based on this definition, these two also should be should be neighbors. Why? It has y and y. The difference is only in one value. Is that okay? However, this these two can't be neighbors, and these two can't be neighbors. This one and this one can't be neighbors. Why? Because this x x prime y prime y. So there is change in more than one value. Is that okay? This is the definition of neighbors. Okay, make it very simple, easy to, to end this, uh, to finish this lecture, make it very easy. Very easy, in every cell, the neighbor of any cell is actually the horizontal and vertical neighbors, but not the diagonal neighbors. So the neighbor of this one is actually, this one can be a neighbor, and this one can be a neighbor, but not this one. You got what I'm saying? So who is the neighbor of this one? Can be this one or this one, but not the diagonal neighbor. So, so for any cell, the neighbor of this cell is a horizontal or vertical direct neighbor, but not, not the diagonal. Why? Why we need to know the neighbor? Because this is how we are going to do simplification. That's what I'm going to explain next time. Any neighbors, I can I can combine them together. For example, very quickly. For example, for, for example, if I have one and one here, I can combine these two together, and instead of writing two terms, I can just write x prime, only one term. Okay, I'm going to explain this one next time. That's why I need to know the neighbor. Who are the neighbor? Because I'm going to make groups of neighbors. As I'm going to explain next time.